empower other women. And the most self-serving but also most true reason, we're told, is that people will believe that smart, capable women will succeed when they start to see smart, capable women succeeding. And I think we can all agree that Alice is one of the best examples of that that we have in our community. Her undeniable business success has shown so many people what smart, capable women can do. So we congratulate you and we thank you. So now what? How do you and I bridge that gaping chasm between where we see ourselves and Alice Dittman's phenomenal business success? What is it that we're supposed to be doing to get to that point? You know the title of my talk, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to build suspense. That hashtag own it is what I think is one of the solutions that we can use to get ahead of those challenges that are facing us in the workplace. Own it can be a two-word mantra that you can use as you start to take those first steps or any steps down the path that Alan, Alice and the other speakers this afternoon have started to pay for us. We as women need to own our own business. And we need to do it in not the entrepreneurship kind of way, which I obviously also think is cool, but we need to do it in the way of claiming our authority and being in business. We also need to own the way that we as individuals choose to be in business. So how do we own the fact that we can be in business at all? Well, let's start by thinking through that list of five qualifications you just looked at for the job that you're kind of interested in. Four of those things you know you're really good at. The fifth thing you're not so sure, and for some reason you're letting that fifth thing completely dictate your decision that you aren't the right person for the job. The other half of the world does not look at that list that way. I was talking to a friend recently about retirement plans and asking if he could give me some more information about what people in the community are doing. And he confidently said, we do that really well. So we scheduled a follow-up call. And I asked a question about a 401k plan versus a 401k plan with a safe harbor. It was a super fascinating question, I assure you. And <laughs> he just calmly said, oh, that's not really something I know about. But that's something the experts can help you with. And at the end of the call, I was just floored, and not because he started the call by saying, I'm probably going to talk about some things that will confuse you, so feel free to stop me. <laughs> but because he hadn't let that thing that he wasn't an expert in stop him from trying to make the sale. So why do we? There's an entire area of research dedicated to growth mindset, the fact that experts become experts by working their asses off. You practice and you get better. It's like the idea of running a marathon that women awesomely do do all the time. You sign up for the marathon, you take 18 horrible weeks of your life and run and run and run. And then on race day, you do the thing that was so scary. And it doesn't happen the other way around. You don't train until you can run 26 miles, then go look for a race to sign up for. Those spots are already taken by the people that believed in themselves in the first place. So your legs and the muscles that you learn over those 18 weeks of to run those miles are like your brain and that they are a muscle. And your brain can learn to do the things like your legs can do. Marcia will tell us all about it later. But stop assuming you can't do them. Know instead that you can. We have to own that fifth thing on the list and own our ability to do it. But that isn't enough. Once you let yourself be in business, then let's claim how we as individuals do it. If you look with me at the panel of speakers, each of these women are just killing it in their areas of what they've chosen to do. They're owning it. And the coolest thing is they couldn't be more different in how they've chosen to do it. So I think, as a part of our activity tonight, I think we should take a pledge to say we can use our precious time and our very precious energy to be proud of ourselves and the way we're doing things rather than the way worrying about the way that other women are. My own example of when I could have been more proud of the way I was doing something is two years ago when I was on maternity leave. And maternity leave to me was kind of a scary thing. Did we talk about it? I wasn't sure. So I didn't. I put on my out of office email, I'm out of the office. That's it. Did I seriously think someone was going to get that email and be like, well, see you in November? Of course not. They didn't think I meant for two months. <laughs> and what's more, the people that knew why I was out of the office probably didn't feel the pride that I really did have that I got to be at home with my family for those eight weeks. The reality is being a mom shapes who I am as a businesswoman, and I'm really proud of it. But I missed a huge opportunity to say that. <laughs> and crying about it also proves how proud I am. <laughs> 
I think maternity leave is one of the most important issues facing women at work in my generation, <coughs> especially for those that don't have it. And when those of us that do have it aren't brave enough to talk about how important it was for our families and our careers, we've done a huge disservice to those women still fighting for their chance. Women are caregivers. We care for our children, our parents, our spouses, our friends, our coworkers. Being good at relationships is what makes us good at our jobs. So let's own it for yourself, for your own career, and for the young woman whose father or mother pointed to you as someone whose career she should follow. Thank you.